Okay, hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Honda NC750X DCT. Roll them credits. Okay, um, the Honda NC750X DCT. Ever there was a bike that should be sponsored by Mormite, this is the bike. You will either love or hate this bike. There's no in between with it. Um, let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Um, tires on this bike are Metzler Rotac. Um, I've got no problems with these tires. I've rode this bike through winter, rode it on all types of surfaces. Country lanes, wet, cold, slippery, through motorways, dual carriageways, not a problem at all. Very little road noise, um, give you a lot of confidence. The bike never feels as though it's going to wash out or the back end step out or anything like that. Uh, totally road orientated tyres, not off road at all. Um, wheels, 70 front and back, um, magged wheels as you can see, not a lot to say about those. Uh, suspension, Front suspension is non-adjustable, rear shock is adjustable, I'm not sure whether it's for uh, preload and rebound, I'd have to loop that up, but it is adjustable on the rear. Um, the suspension is, you know, it, it's, it's not firm, it's not too soft, it's just right. The bike handles well through the bends, um, no problems with the suspension whatsoever. Uh, moving up, going on to the engine. This engine is actually a Honda Jazz car engine that has been cut down and shoehorned into the, the bike. Um, with the engine, it's really strange. It's not a vibey engine. It feels almost agricultural. Um, it sort of chugs along. It's a very low revving engine. It's always at really low revs, but it's got plenty of torque. You know, there's a lot of torque on the internet that the bike is underpowered. I don't feel that this bike is underpowered at all. You know, for everyday use, for the type of bike it is, it's got loads of power. You can ride on the motorway at this, 70, 80 miles an hour, be it around about 4,000 revs, if memory serves me right. Um, still have lots of power for overtaking but, uh, cars, not a problem at all. The way that the gearbox is set up, um, people complain that the gearbox selects the wrong gear going into bends when riding spirited. Um, all I can say with that is, you need to change the way you ride this bike. I'll cover it in more detail later on. But engine wise, very little vibes, um, more than enough power, not a problem with the engine at all. Um, the exhaust on this bike is not a stock exhaust. Um, however, last year I did ride a stock bike with a stock exhaust. It was a nice engine towed. It looked quite nice, quite an angular exhaust on the stock bike. No need to change it. I bought this one and it had already had the, this exhaust put on, so I can't really comment more than that. Um, the seat, again, this is an aftermarket seat. However, when I rode the stock bike, um, the seat on that was very firm, but it was very comfy. You know, you could spend all day in that seat, no problems whatsoever. Riding position on this bike, again, it's a very comfortable bike to ride. Um, your legs aren't too cramped up, they're just at that nice level. Some of the um, adventure bikes that you ride are, you know, your feet are almost forward and I find that puts pressure on your spine. These are just the right angle, um, is not to put too much pressure on your back. Um, again, this bike has handlebar raises on it, um, however, the stock version, just a nice height, it's not a problem. I have to say that the handlebar rises do help on this bike. I find it more comfortable. Again, screen, this has an aftermarket screen on. However, when I rode the stock bike, I found the screen was too low, to be honest, for me. Um, you've got wind blast sort of from this position upwards. However, it was clean air, it wasn't turbulent, but I've just got used to having a taller screen. I like to be in a bubble of calm air when I ride. So, I did put um, this aftermarket screen on. Um, the fuel tank, the fuel tank is mounted at the back. You've got um, what I'll come to later, where the fuel tank should be. You've got like a big luggage compartment there that you can put a full face helmet in. I will show you that later. The only downside of having the fuel tank back here is that you've got a bag strapped across the top. 
you've got to take everything off to access and fill the bike up. For me, it's not a deal breaker, um, and I think the payoff is worth it because having this here is a godsend. It's just a fantastic feature on the bike to have that big, um, big compartment there for storing stuff in. Um, as you can see, got the Honda luggage, very expensive accessory. You can get cheaper ones for the bike, aftermarket ones, but I think the, the Honda ones set the bike off. They do match and, and look good. Um, I'll come on to the clock. I will show you that in a few seconds. Okay, as already mentioned, um, where the fuel tank normally sits, we've got this big compartment in here for storing anything from a full face helmet um, through to anyone shopping. You can put your waterproofs in there. As you can see, you've got um, a fair reach down to get the keys out of the ignition, and then you have this other lock here. Now, if you turn it to the right, that opens this compartment. And as you can see, my wife's got everything, including the kitchen sink, shoved in there. But it's a, it's a nice big compartment. Um, at the bottom of this compartment is the uh, the battery housing as well. You access the battery through that port. Click that shut and then turn it the other way. And that releases the seat. And that's how you put fuel into the, the bike. As I said earlier, the only downside with this is um, if you've got a bag across the top, obviously you've got to take all your straps off and take your bag off to fill the bike. Okay, let's break the subject of the gearbox. Um, if you didn't know, DCT, all you really need to know about getting into loads of technical gear detail is that it's an automatic gearbox. There's no clutch, there's no gear selector as such, uh, as in the traditional way you change with your foot. Um, there are switches on the handlebars that have, uh, let you control, you can use manual, it's up and down like you would on paddles of uh, a car that's got a semi-automatic gearbox. Um, the problem with the gearbox is a lot of people say that it selects the wrong gears at the wrong time and a lot of it is when you're going into bends, it feels when you first ride the bike and you don't know how to ride it, it feels as though it can be in too high a gear. Well, let me just explain what causes this. Really, when you approach a bend, um, the way you should negotiate a bend is quite simple. You should identify the bend, identify the vanishing point, pick your line, slow the bike using uh, brakes, get the correct speed to go around the bend, then select the correct gear for the speed that you do into the bend and then accelerate smoothly out. However, most of us don't do it like that. Most of us enjoy riding a bike spiritedly. And when we do that, we tend to identify the bend, go hooling into it too fast, hard braking, knock it down the gear and use engine braking to slow us down and then we accelerate out through the other side. You can't do this on this bike. The engine braking side, you have no engine braking on this bike at all. And so therefore that gives you the feeling of when you try to do that, come into it hard and fast and, and brake hard at the last minute, you're then flapping and where's the clutch, there's no clutch lever, I can't knock it down and you end up all out of line, the wrong line around the bend, you feel that you've come into it too hot and you automatically blame the bike saying you were in the wrong gear. It's not, it, it's how you ride the bike. If you ride the bike with that in mind, then you start doing your corners, you can still ride through bends fast on these bikes and it will be in the right gear as long as you are at the right speed as you go into the bend. Um, and in fact, you'll actually find that it smooths your riding out because you'll be picking better lines and you will be hitting the better lines. You'll be more precise with your cornering riding this bike if you ride it in that fashion. But like I say, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing when you've been riding bikes for over 30 years to get back into that habit of using that system of control where you're actually slowing the bike down using the brakes and getting the correct speed, then selecting the gear. It's something we don't do naturally, but when you do do it, you'll find the gearbox works well. Um, so if you do test ride this bike, please keep that in mind. And you know, you do that type of riding and you'll get more pleasure out of the gearbox. Okay, so who is this bike aimed at? What is this bike good at? 
Well, first of all, this bike is a godsend for commuting. If you've got a long commute in a city, going through a lot of standing traffic, with it being automatic, it is just so easy. You're not worried about clutch selecting the gear and feathering the clutch as you're moving and filtering through traffic. This thing it is just a dream to drive in traffic. Secondly, um, I'll give you an example. I bought this bike for my wife. She's recently passed the test. She is a confident rider. She's confident riding a big, powerful bike at speed. However, being of the fairest sex, she's not quite as strong as me. And when we go touring and the bike's loaded up, she struggles with the weight of the bike. End result was the had an incident where she actually stole the bike and dropped it. She was on uneven ground. It was a difficult take off to do, um, but it knocked her confidence. So she was after a bike that was a little bit bigger, had enough power to be able to go long distances comfortably and be able to put a load of kit on. And when this bike loaded up, it is heavy. However, with the um, the automatic gearbox it means it takes that element away from stalling so you know if she comes to a junction and she's on a steep incline she doesn't have to worry about stalling the bike there's a lot less to think about clutch control brake control as you pull off you just twist the throttle and you go so you know that that is another aspect somebody who perhaps isn't physically strong and wants a bigger bike it's an excellent choice for that um, other than that, would I have this bike as my everyday bike? Most probably not. Um, I'm still at an age where I enjoy riding bikes like a lunatic. Um, I always ride safe on the roads, don't get me wrong, but you can't ride these bikes in a spirited fashion the way that you can ride um, a, a manual gearbox. So, you know. If I was commuting every day and I lived in a the city, then yes, I most probably would think about having one of these as an everyday bike. But for the type of riding I do, I live out in the countryside, we've got fantastic roads where we live, and I just, I enjoy my gears. But I'm not going to slag it off and say that it's a terrible bike, because if you're in the market for this type of bike, best thing since sliced bread. Okay, this is uh, how you control the gearbox. Um, if you look on the right hand side you have a switch and you can knock it into sport, you can knock it into drive, you can knock it into neutral. When you start up, if you look at the screen, I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's always in neutral whenever you start it up. Uh, you do one press like so, and as you can see it's selected first and we're in uh, drive mode. If we click it again, it then brings up the sport mode and as you can see there are three settings, one, two and three. Um, one is basically that if you're driving in the rain or if fuel economy is a big thing, um, it holds onto the gears, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change up, it, it puts it straight into the highest gear possible basically. Um, setting two that it's in now, I think that is the best setting, it gives you the best of both wheels, it does change up sooner, it does hold the gears a little bit longer before changing. Uh, setting three for me, um, that one, it, it's resistant to change up gear, it sort of holds onto the gears too long, it feels as though it's flashing the engine, um, I don't really like that mode too much. Um, as you can see, even in bright sunlight, the clock is easy to see, however what I will say is that um, it's, it's a very small screen and it can be very, um, what, what's the word, it's a little bit busy and a little bit small um, to see what you do. But once you've got used to looking at the clock and you know where everything is, you've got no problems. You've got a fuel gauge on there, um, you've got your, your trip, uh, the rev counter, that just moves across the top. So when you're actually riding it does change colour, when you start to get into the red it does change colour from blue, green and red. Uh, very nice touch, very good. Um, on this side, I don't know whether you can see, but there is a button, uh, and these are your manual paddles that we were talking about. So, you know, you want to knock the bike down, you just press that, and then on the other side, press, press 
vehicle. Um, you can use that at any time, you can have it in complete manual mode where you have to do the changing. However, you know, it's an intelligent gearbox, so if you're going to do something that's going to damage the engine, it will change gear for you even when you're in manual mode. And then on top of that, if you're in automatic mode, you can still use those buttons at any time. So if you think you're in too high a gear and you want to overtake something on the dual carriageway, you can knock it down the gear and just keep accelerating, you know, and like I say, if you over rev the bike, it'll just go straight back into automatic mode and it will change gear for you. So um, all in all, it's, it's a really clever piece of text. Uh, as you can see, the switch gear on here is normal hundred standard. Um, very good, very sturdy, high quality. Um, no problems at all with any of the switch gear. Uh, the mirrors as well, the mirrors are really good. Um, they don't vibrate, uh, you get a good view behind you. No problem with the mirrors whatsoever. Brakes on this bike. Um, the brakes are very good really for the size of the bike. They're more than adequate. Um, it's got an adjustable front lever. Um, you can brake, two finger braking. Uh, it's nice and progressive, it's not snatchy. Um, always gives you confidence that the bike is gonna stop when and where you want it to. Um, it never feels as though it's grabby or snatchy. You don't feel as though the front end is going to wash away from you. You do get enough feedback through the front wheel, knowing what it's doing uh, at all times under all different sorts of braking situations. Um, I've never had the ABS come on um, when it shouldn't do. Uh, in fact, I've only ever had the ABS come on once, and that was when I just tested it, uh, and it brought me to a standstill, no problem, just as ABS should. works perfect. Okay, at this point I would normally like to uh, jump on the bike, take the bike out, give you some on-road footage, um, do a little bit of commentary about how it angles. Um, unfortunately, due to the lockdown, we're not able to do that at the moment. So, you know, everybody stay home, stay safe, do the right thing, keep your family safe, keep uh, all the key workers safe, keep yourself safe. Um, Headlights on this bike, headlights are fine, very good headlights on this bike, I'm not sure whether they are LEDs but uh, no problems with them, this came with uh, fitted spotlights on it when I bought it and again I think those are the original Honda ones and again very very good, very very bright, absolutely no problems whatsoever um, with lighting the road up. So, final summary. Okay, so the Honda NC750X DCT. It's a good bike. Um, you know, it's a workhorse. I think it's suited to uh, a niche market. Suits some people with their needs more than the majority of us. However, it's a good all-rounder. You know, you can go away touring on this for a week, not a problem with lots of comfort, lots of power. Honda reliability, Honda build quality. You can still use this bike for commuting. There's a hundred and one ways that you can use this bike. Is it for me? Well, no, we've already said that. It's not for me. Um, I hope that's been of some interest to you. Um, as with all reviews, including mine, take them with a pinch of salt because we are all different. You know, what I like and what irritates me might not be the same for you. The only way to get a true, a good idea of a bike is to go out and test ride it yourself. So, as soon as this lockdown is off, everybody get out there, support your local dealers, get out, test ride some bikes, hopefully get yourself a nice new bike. Okay, so that's the end of the review. If you liked it, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Bike Rider out.